Hello and welcome to Cyber Hashira. In this video, we are going to cover the process of signing data using PKCS11 and verifying the signature against the actual data. I will talk about the PKCS11 functions meant for signing and verifying data. Let's begin. I will be covering eight new PKCS11 functions in this video. Uh, four functions are for signing data and an additional four functions used for verifying the signature. I will start with C sign init. When signing some data, C sign init should be your first function call. It initializes the memory with the information required to begin the signing process. This function takes three arguments. As with many other PKCS11 functions, the first argument of C sign init is a session handle number. The second argument is the mechanism you wish to use for signing the data. As you may know, a private key is necessary for signing data. Hence, the third argument will be the handle number of a private key. These are some return codes that C sign init may return. More information about C sign init is available on page 152. If you have watched my previous video about encryption, I discussed single part and multi part operation. So I'm assuming you already know what a single part and multi part operation is. If not, please watch my previous video to understand what they are. The C sign function is used for single part signing, that is, signing small size data. This function takes five arguments. First argument is a session handle. The second argument indicates the location where the data to be signed is stored. This variable is of type CK by PTR. The third argument is the total length of the data to be signed and it is of type CK U long. The fourth argument specifies the location where the signature will be sent or stored. This argument is of type CK byte PTR. And the fifth argument is the length of that signature. This variable is of type CK U long. Here's a list of some return codes that C sign function may return. Pause this video if you want to read it. You can read more about C sign function on page 153 and 154. The next function is C sign update. This function is used for multi-part signing. If you have a large data that you want to sign, you will first break that data into smaller chunks and then sign each of those chunks one after the other until you have signed the entire data. The first argument is a session handle number. The second argument points to the location from where a small chunk of data will be read. This argument is of type CK by PTR. And the third argument is the length of that data. These are some of the return codes that C sign update may return. More information available on page 154. The C sign final function should be called to end or finalize a multi part signing operation. This function will process and return a signature. The first argument of C sign final is a session handle number. The second argument is the location where the signature will be returned. And the third argument is the length of that signature. These are some return codes that C sign final may return. More information is available on page 154 and 155. Now I will discuss the PKCS11 functions used for verifying a signature. Let's begin with C verify init. This function initializes the signature verification process and it takes three arguments. First argument is a session handle number. The second argument is the mechanism that will be used for verifying the signature. This mechanism should be the same as the one used for signing the data. Third argument is the handle number of the public key required for verification. And these are the return codes that C verify init may return. 
More information about C Verify Init is available on page 157 and 158. The C Verify function is used for verifying the signature of small data, a process also known as a single part verification, and it requires five arguments. First argument is a session handle number. Second argument is the location of the data that needs to be verified. Third argument is the length of that data. The fourth argument is the location containing the signature. Uh, this will be used for verifying the data. And the fifth argument is the length of that signature. These are some return codes that C Verify function may return. More information about C Verify is available on page 158 and 159. The C Verify update function is used for verifying the signature of a very large data. You need to break that large data into smaller chunks and then pass those chunks one after the other until you have read all the data. This function requires three arguments. First argument is a session handle. The second argument is the location of the small chunk of the large data. Third argument is the length of that data. These are the return codes that C Verify Update may return. More information about C Verify Update can be found on page 159. And the last function for today's video is C Verify Final. This function is used to finalize a multi part verification. It checks whether it can verify the signature of a data we have passed. This function requires three arguments a session handle number, the location containing the signature that we want to verify, and the length of that signature. And these are the return codes that C Verify Final may return. More information about C Verify Final is available on page 159 and 160. There's just one sample I will be discussing in this video. Uh, this sample will use CKM SHA-256 RSA PKCS mechanism to sign and verify a text. CKM SHA-256 RSA PKCS can also be called SHA-256 with RSA. Uh, let's have a look at this sample. This code will sign and verify a text using CKM SHA-256 RSA PKCS mechanism. It will first generate a key pair, a private key and a public key. It will use that uh, private key to sign the text and then the public key to verify the signature. Now, most of what you see in this code is the same as all my uh, previous code. So I'll just show you or I'll just point out what I've added. I've added two variables, h public and h private. Uh, these variables are of type ck object handle. h public will store the, uh, the public key handle. h private will store the private key handle. Uh, then we have a variable called plain data. Uh, this is the text that this sample will try to sign. Once this text has been signed, it will store the signature in another variable called signature. Uh, this is a, a pointer variable. The current value is null. Uh, this variable is of type ck byte. And then there's a variable called siglen. This is of type ck ulong. Siglen is supposed to store the length of the signature. The current value is set to zero. Okay, let's scroll down. I'm sure you must have seen these uh, functions in my previous samples. Okay, here's the function for generating the RSA key pair. Okay, so generate RSA key pair. This function will generate RSA key pair using CKM RSA PKCS key pair gen mechanism. Uh, the key size is 2048 and it's going to use a public exponent of 65537. The keys will be labeled as RSA public for the public key and RSA private for the private key. This is the template used by the public key. 
um, if you want to look at it uh, please note that I have set CKA verify as yes the value of yes is CKA true which means I am allowing the private key to verify a signature if I set this variable or if I set the value of CKA verify as no this public key cannot be used to verify the signature same goes for okay so here's a template for our private key and uh, there's an attribute called CKA sign the current value of sign is yes which means I want to use this private key to sign some uh, data if this value is set to no I will not be able to use my private key to sign the data okay and this is the usual code to generate uh, the key pair once the key pair has been generated it's going to display a message uh, with the handle number of those uh, of the of the public key and the private key okay let's keep moving here's a function for sign data and the function to verify the data i'll start with sign data inside sign data i have declared a variable called mech this uh, variable is of type ck mechanism and the current value is ckm sha 256 rsa pkcs this is also equivalent to uh, SHA-256 with RSA. I will first initialize the sign operation using the function C sign in it that takes three arguments which are a session handle, the mechanism that I've declared here and the handle number of our private key. The next function that follows after C sign in it is C sign. This function takes five arguments. The first argument is a session handle second argument is the plain data third argument is the size of that plain data I've, i'm passing minus one here too so i can in exclude null at the end of uh, the text i have not assigned appropriate or enough memory to store the signature so i'm passing null here and the fifth argument is going to store the length of the signature and whatever value i get for sig length will be used to assign memory to signature which is what I'm doing in the next line once I have uh, assigned memory to signature I will repeat C sign again with five argument the session handle number plain data size of the plain data signature uh, with the memory assigned to it and the length of that signature and once this uh, function executes successfully it's going to print the signature as hex. Okay, let's take a look at uh, verified data. Uh, hold on. Okay, this function. Verifies the signature. Okay, much better. Sorry about that. Okay, so inside verify data, uh, again, I have declared a variable called mech. Uh, this is of type CK mechanism. And I am passing the same uh, mechanism here, CKM SHA-256 RSA PKCS. Now, if I want to successfully verify the signature, I should use the same algorithm that was used for signing the data. If I use a different algorithm or another mechanism, this will definitely give us an error message. Okay, so I will start the verification process by initializing the verify operation and the function for that is C verify init that takes three argument, the session handle number, the mechanism that I've declared here and the handle number of our public key. Once the verify operation is initialized, I will start the verification process by calling C verify function that takes five argument, the session handle number, the plain data that I want to verify, uh, the size of that plain data, the signature, and the length of that signature. I've already uh, I already have the signature here, so I'll just pass that same variable. Once the signature is verified, it will display a message that says "signed data verified." All right, and then we have the main function, which is loading the library, connecting to the slot, uh, generating the RSA key pair, printing the plain text as hex, 
signing the data, verifying the data, and finally disconnecting from the slot. I'll save the changes that I've made. I will first compile this code using the command G++, the name of the code file, the output, include all headers from the include directory, tnix. The program has compiled. I need the slot number. This is the slot number that I will be using. All right, let's execute this code. So slot number and the password. Here's the output. So it connected via session one, generated the key pair. This is the handle number of uh, the public key, the private key. This is plain data as hex. And I get a message that says plain data signed, which means uh, this data was signed. Here's a signature. And that data was also verified. And then the program ends here. Okay, that's it. Thank you so much for watching. Please use the comment section if you have any questions about what we discussed in today's video. If you're new here, then please consider subscribing to my channel. And uh, what else? Oh, don't forget to leave a like if you liked my content. I will talk to you soon in another video. Bye for now.